Hello, my name is Joel Z. Williams. People in my neighborhood call me the Poor People's Advocate. I'm the Director of Products for Peaceful Operations. I wanted to take this opportunity to show you a class in uh, mattress encasement, mattress and furniture encasement to be exact. And uh, what, what I want to tell you, um, number one, is that the number one way to abate a bed bug infestation is besides, you know, you've got your professional pest control operator that can come out and spray neopyrethroids and, and other very powerful chemicals. That still remains to be one of the most effective ways to treat bed bug uh, problem. But the problem is it's very expensive for an average one uh, room build uh, unit in a, an apartment complex. It averages around $400 per, per treatment. And uh, the treatments usually come in a series of three. They'll, they'll usually come out once per week and spray. It's very effective. It, it, uh, it, so far, uh, we know that uh, bed bugs are building a resistance, however, and in, in, we've seen that in Virginia. But uh, what I want to talk to you about now is for about $20, I think that if you, you can in, uh, use mattress encasement and couple that with some, some really cheap spraying techniques. And uh, what I'm going to show you today, I'm going to give you a class on that. I'm, uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. But what I want to talk to you about is getting used to the idea that your furniture is going to be encased for about a year. Um, they, there's two studies that I looked at. Uh, Cornell University in, uh, in New York says that the um, eggs from bed bugs take about two weeks to to hatch after the female lays, and she, we know that she can lay about five per day. So, uh, and then at the other extreme, that's that's one of the, the lower um, measurements of, of time for I call eruption for the for the egg to actually erupt. Uh, it takes about two weeks, according to Cornell. Um, a study at the University of California, Davis, which is near Sacramento, um, UC Davis says that uh, bed bugs can survive with, a, with what, just one blood meal for up to 400 days. So you've got this, this real short study that says if you encase your mattress or whatever, then you, you only have to wait two weeks before you can take the plastic off. And then the, at the other extreme, the UC Davis says that the bed bug can live for up to 400 days in a, in a laboratory at room temperature. Uh, I want to err on the side of caution. So I'm going to advise you to get out your calendar and just mark on your calendar 400 days out, one year and 35 days, but one, one year and a month, and put that on your calendar as the time that you can take the plastic sheeting off. Because I get calls all the time, people going, well, how long do I have to have my mattress in case? The, the short version, the short answer is six months. I would say at the bare minimum, right? But like the UC Davis study shows, adult bed bugs can live up to a year. Now, I, I don't want to risk it. So, so for, the, for the purpose of, of this conversation, I'm going to advise you for 400 days. I'm going to say, go the long route. All right, now, why does mattress encasement work? Mattress encasement works because it literally imprisons bed bugs within the confines of whatever piece of furniture they're in. Think of a credit card. Think of, think of the width of a credit card. That's, if you can stick a credit card in there, that, that means a bed bug can fit in there, right? So bed bugs loves cracks and crevices. They absolutely love them. They prefer them. And they will hide in places that you can't see. And so a lot of times, People will say, well, I, I, had, I did all this treatment, I did everything, but they still came back. How does that happen? That's because they're able to hide so well. And they have a uh, the, the egg is resistant to, to most pesticides. So what I'm going to show you today is skip all of that. Don't worry about that. If you lock them up, if you imprison them in, inside your, your, your mattress or your um, love seat, your couch, if you get the plastic, you seal it with duct tape, there's no way they can get to you. So your bed bug problem is, is almost always going to be eliminated by this step. Uh, I've probably handled personally, uh, been on site probably at around 500. I would, I'd say that'd be a, a, a conservative estimate. Been about 500 different locations. And almost all of those locations, the bed bugs were found in one of the two corners of the box spring of a mattress set. I know people will tell you, well, I've got them coming through the roof. That's, that happens. 
you know, bed bugs, uh, there's certain species that actually prey on birds and bats. And so and you see this a lot in the northern Midwest where the bats and birds that were in near the attic in the roof area will go, you know, summer, they'll go south for the summer and the bed bugs will get hungry, they'll drop down into that. I've seen that before. But I'm telling you, I've been to a lot of these places and almost invariably, they are always in the box spring of the mattress. Now that's not to say that they won't, you won't find them in a nearby, uh, I've seen them behind a picture uh, that was hung on a wall, which really blew me away. I couldn't believe that. They were harbor harboring there. I've seen them in nightstands. I've seen them in other pieces of furniture. So that's not, I don't want you to think, well, I didn't see any in a box spring, so it must not have them. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is you can save yourself a lot of time usually if you if you have bed bug, you, you suspect bed bug epidemic, save yourself some time, turn that mattress, the, the box spring over, and I, I mean, almost 90% of the time they're gonna be there. Now, um, short of, the, the encasement, if you don't have the means to encase your entire um, bed, furniture, all that, you got to get some plastic sheeting on that bed. You got to at least make a bed bug shield. And this was popularized, this, this strategy was popularized by my colleague, his name is uh, Jules Nosso. It, it's a French Canadian guy, very crafty guy. This guy, I, he, I owe him, he's a saint. He helps people with bed bugs all over the internet. Um, but Jules says that uh, the, just the laying of the plastic sheeting uh, over the bed makes it hard for the bed bugs to get to you. And let me show you why. I have a, here a, a photo, a close up photo of a bug thanks to the, the United States Department of Health and Human Services. And I've pur purposely, let's see if I can get this into the frame here. I've purposely overexposed this picture so that I can kind of draw your attention to some of the bed bug anatomy. Now here, if I, I know you can't probably see this well, but I want you to get the notion that bed bugs have very small claw-like appendages that they use on the very tips of their of their feet. That's how they use. Uh, that's how they, they they use that to cling on to fabric. And 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 if you if you if you can imagine a, a kind of a lobster claw uh, under a microscope, you know that's how they 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 kind of grip it, you know, clamp it, and. Um, with plastic, they're not able to get, they can't get a firm footing. And so plastic is, is a natural enemy to that. I mean, it's, it works against that. So for that reason, we can exploit what I call, um, I'm, it's mattress encasement. But what I want you to get the idea of is you can get some of this contractor's grade plastic sheeting. And this is four mils thick. Um, and this is 10 feet of it. 10 by 25 feet. This roll here cost, uh, I think I got it for about $11, but I, I imagine it probably would be cheaper some other places. Now, you, you certainly can get a different brand. I don't, I don't know if it matters that, that you get this brand, but it's four mils thick. And the reason why I, I recommend getting the thicker variety is because you're gonna have this on your furniture for about a year and a month. So you're gonna, you know, when you sleep, you sleep tough sometimes, you, you, you move around, you might even participate in some other activity on your bed. So you need to have it where it's gonna to be tough enough to resist that. And for that reason, you're going to seal it with duct tape, okay? And I'm gonna show you here in a minute. But what I want you to get the concept is you're going to have to get used to sleeping on plastic. And you could put sheets over it after the uh, troubled period, I would say two months. Um, you can surely certainly won't have to sleep directly on the plastic after the bed bugs have had time to erupt uh, in, the, in the rest of the uh, room. But what I would advise you is to just keep that plastic on there and just get get used to the crinkling noise. I mean that's worse. I mean that's that's a better alternative to, to being bed every night. But pla duct tape. Get a good quality duct tape too. Don't scrimp here. Okay. Get something that's going to be real tacky and something durable. All right. Now, <clears throat> when you turn that box spring mattress over, a lot of times you're gonna encounter bed bugs. They're gonna be scrawl crawling and trying to get away because you've discovered their harborage, right? Well, back in 2010, I developed the Phoenix Method. And I, I don't know if you guys can see this really good, 
But the Phoenix method, what it, what it basically boiled down to is I discovered that if you put chlorine, bleach, and, and water together and you spray it directly on the bed bugs, it kills them instantly, right? Well, the problem with that is, of course, it's going to stain any clothing, bed, bed sheet clothing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to bleach it. It's going to turn it white. So uh, we di we've discovered that alcohol, rubbing alcohol, above 90% or greater, this, is, this happens to be 91%, will also work to kill the bed bugs on, direct, but you, on contact. So I'm not advising that, that you use this alone, that you, that you use the Phoenix method alone to um, abate the, the bed bug infestation, but when you, when you turn that box spring mattress over and you've got them crawling all over the place, knock them down, spray some of this directly on them, and, and you can put this in a squirt bottle, squirt it on them right then before you wrap them up and that way you you run you, you, the risk that you're going to one or two of them is going to scurry away and get somewhere else is going to be diminished okay so i want to i want to recommend that um, once you get them knocked down once you turn that bed over and you get it knocked down move quickly you know the, the longer that it takes you to to encase them the longer they have to try to scurry out and, and get into another area of your house okay Let's begin. Okay, so what we have here is your basic box, uh, you know, mattress and box frame setup. This is, a, of course, a twin size, small size. And this is typically the type of bed that you might encounter if, at a college or a, a dorm, you know. And so I'm going to show you on this mattress and box frame set because I think it's going to be a lot easier for me to move around and show you, okay? Okay, now when I encounter, this, this is a not infested bed bug house, but when I encounter in the field, when I, when I see bed bugs, they're almost always in the corner of these box spring mattresses. What I advise is go ahead and rip this lining out all the way around the uh, bottom of the box spring and go ahead and spray in there with your Clorox or your, your uh, alcohol. It doesn't have bed bugs, but they got spiders. So, so do that, and uh, that will help knock down that problem. Okay? Okay, now I've, kinda, I've unwrapped the plastic, and I kind of want you to get a look at, and, and kind of get a feel of how tough that is. Look at that. That, that is four mils, and that is going to resist. That is going to resist a year and a month of sleeping on it. Just wanted to show you that. Okay, um, no, here's another teaching moment. Um, if you have an envelope opener, envelope opener works good to tear the plastic. This is a tip that I learned the hard way. I used to go out with scissors and knives and, and always forget them, but this it works really good because you can put it right in your pocket and this thing really shreds that plastic. Little tip. Okay, now as you can see, we have the mattress completely enclosed in the plastic. Now this is a step where I don't want you to scrimp. I don't want you to think, well, this, this plastic cost me 11 bucks. I, I, I gotta be real careful in the usage of it. No, make sure that you get every corner of this bed covered. Every section of it needs to be encased in, in plastic, okay? So if that means that you're gonna maybe have to buy two rolls, that would be worth it, okay? Now, I advise putting the seam underneath the bed. I, I think that that's better, that's an easier idea. So what we talked about is not being uh, spendthrift when it comes to mattress encasement. You want to make sure that you leave enough room on both edges that you can fold it over, but you don't want to you don't want to cut it too short. You want to you know be sensible about how you're going to do that.
I prefer to put the seam on the underside. That way you're not sleeping on it. And there's really no science to it. I'm sure people are gonna, some people are gonna be neater than others. But uh, any, any, anything you can do to imprison these bed bugs is, is a step forward. and that's why it's so critical to use enough of this tape don't don't skimp on the tape you gotta get it locked away for a year Okay, now I've uh, finished doing the corners and now I wanna just show you, this is gonna be the master seam. This is the seam that's gonna run the entire length of the bed, okay? And if you see this overlap, I want you to notice this overlap. I wanna see, I want you to see how much overlap there is. You see that? There's at least a foot and a half of overlap there. Now that's important because bed bugs are going to go, they're going to naturally sense the corner. They're going to try to find a way out. And this really complicates things for them because it, get, it makes them, forces them to have to travel all this distance. And we, now that we know about the hooks on their, their feet, we know that that makes it, that's, that's like going through the Mojave Desert for them. It's going to be very difficult. It's one more obstacle to, uh, for them to get out. make that seam run all along all the way to the end of the bed and wherever we have tape seams we're going to overlap the seams of the tape as well so there's no gap and I'll show you here you shouldn't have any gap and that plastic should not be, you shouldn't be able to pull it apart. Well, that will last a year and 35 days. Okay, now you can see we've got a completely encased box spring mattress. I've always found, whenever I go out in the field and do these things, I've always found that in uh, houses where there's a man and a woman, the women are always better than men at, at making this thing look neat. So for the, you know, I'm by myself today, so uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's not as neat in, as it could be, but I, I, wanted, I wanted to show you how that's done. Now, and uh, bed bug infestations, like I, I discussed earlier, Jules and so talks about the bed bug shield. Now at the bare minimum, this is something that you should do if you, have, if you can't afford the, to completely encase the furniture. This is the, the next stop, you know, stop gap procedure that you could do. Now, a bed bug shield, this piece of plastic is too small, but I don't, I don't want to waste any more. But I want to show you that if you are going to make a bed bug shield, you should cut a strip of plastic to completely go over your mattress so that it drapes near the ground. It's not touching the ground, but near the ground. It should be all the way down there, okay? Now, that is a not the preferred method if you whew, I, know I haven't done this in a while I'm kind of winded if uh, if you can afford it you certainly want to encase the entire mattress but this is a stopgap measure the bed bug shield as, as Jules calls it but uh, if you can get a sheet of plastic between you 
and the bed, that's the next best thing to do. Okay, I think we're done now. I just wanted to take the opportunity to show the bed now that it, you can hardly see that that box spring mattress is, is enclosed. Now, um, in most situations, you're gonna go ahead and wrap both mattresses. You're gonna do the, the uh, uh, box spring and then the, the top mattress. Now, this is what I have left over remaining from that original roll. Um, from wrapping the box spring. So as you can see, this, there's about enough plastic here to do a full uh, mattress set on a twin. So I, I would imagine it would be, you would need a little bit more plastic to do a queen and certainly a lot more to do a king size bed. But I just wanted to kind of give you that. Now, um, one of the things that's important about fighting bed bugs is you, you have to constantly keep up to date with your monitoring. A lot of people will, after the, after the mattress is encased, they'll let down their guard and, and uh, the bed bugs will have moved on to somewhere else in the house. The, this same uh, strategy can be applied to any area where you spend a lot of time. A lot of times you'll see bed bugs in recliners, you'll see bed bugs on couches. This strategy works equally depending, regardless of what piece of furniture. So again, you wanna knock it down first using bleach or, or uh, alcohol above 90%. Then you wanna get that uh, four mil plastic, the contractor's plastic, you wanna get it all the way around the, the furniture and you wanna seal it tight with duct tape. And you wanna leave it there for at least, at the bare minimum, at least three to six months, I would say would be, that's pushing it. I, I would, I would just, it's going to be your call, ultimately. You're going to make that decision. But if it were me, I would go with the UC Davis standard and say 400 days. Okay, thank you. Again, my name is Joel Z. Williams. I am the Poor People's Advocate. You will recognize me by my white hat, but you will know me by my virtuous ways. Thank you.